The IMF predicts economic growth for the Caribbean. Our top story in Caribbean Newsline for Friday, May 11, from the CMC News Center in Bridgetown. I'm Ricardo Roberts. Good evening. Thanks for joining us. The International Monetary Fund, the IMF, is projecting 1% to 2% growth in tourism-dependent and commodity exporting economies of the region. In its regional economic outlook for the Western Hemisphere released on Friday, the Washington-based financial institution estimates growth for the Latin America and Caribbean region will increase from 1.3% in 2017 to 2% in 2018. And for next year, the IMF forecast growth will pick up to 2.8%. According to the fund, Grenada is expected to register the highest growth for the next two years. 3.6% Guyana's expected uh, growth has been put at 3.5% this year, increasing to 37 in 2019. And the IMF said St. Kitts and Nevis will register economic growth of 3.5% in 2018, decreasing slightly to 3.2% and the following year and um, Antigua and Barbuda will register 3.5% growth this year, but that will dip to 3% in 2019. The IMF also said Bahamas' economic growth for 2018 will be 2.5%, dropping to 2.2% next year, while hurricane-battered Dominica will be the only Caribbean country to register negative growth in 2018 of minus 16.3%. However, it is projected that will increase to 12.2% in 2019. The IMF figures show that St. Lucia, St. Vincent, and the Grenadines, Haiti, will all register economic growth of more than 2% in 2018, remaining almost stagnant the following year. It said Jamaica, which will register growth of 1.5% this year, will see the figure rising slightly of to 1.8% next year, while Suriname's growth of 1.4% uh, this year will increase to 2% in 2019. Barbados and Trinidad and Tobago are the only two Caribbean countries to register growth below 1% this year. According to the figures, Barbados' economic growth has been pegged at 0.5% this year and 0.8% in 2019. Trinidad and Tobago's growth will remain at 0.2% for the next two years. Political leader of the Barbados Labour Party, BLP, Mia Motley, says she's not afraid to go to the IMF if that is what it takes to turn the ailing Barbados economy around. Motley declared her hand during the party's manifesto launch on Thursday night ahead of the May 24th general elections. The BLP leader, who is confident of winning, said while such a decision could only be made after an assessment of the true state of the economy, she was prepared to make the tough call if she had to. Motley says the BLP is willing to work with anyone to improve the state of the economy. She says declining foreign reserves and high government debt are areas the BLP intends to give urgent attention to within the first months if elected to office. The IMF was set up for purposes such as this. And that's why you heard when I said Parliament months ago talk about it. And that is why you heard equally of um, Tom Adams going in 81, but he went early when he could control and manage everything. And her skin started for it. And Barbados went twice and came out of it. Will it be the only way? No, it isn't. But does it allow us to bring back confidence and to allow us to deal with the international capital markets, all our partners, and everyone else? It does. And we have, therefore, to go in and make the assessments that we need to make. I have not come here to lie to the people of Barbados. I have come to talk to you and with you and to talk the truth. Barbadians also heard Thursday night that if the BLP is elected, they will no longer have to pay road tax. The party's economic advisor, Dr. Clyde Maskell, said that instead, vehicle owners would be required to pay a small tax on gas. He was tasked with the responsibility of explaining how the BLP intends to pay for the plans contained in the pages of its manifesto. Maskell explained that all the plans in the BLP manifesto had been subjected to two years of research and costs had been calculated. He says that in the spirit of equity, commercial vehicles that were more than average 
uh, users of the roads would be required to pay more. We're going to shift the incidence of the tax more towards the business community. And how do we do it? Those people who use the road most should pay most. Agree? It's called equity and justice. So therefore, we are going to transfer the road tax to a small tax on fuel. And as a result, those businesses that use the heavy vehicles on the road and are on the road all day will pay proportionately. The Trinidad and Tobago government says the $23 billion debt owed to it by the financially troubled Colonial Life Insurance Company is finally being settled and the repayments are contributing to the economic recovery that officials in the Twin Island Republic are reporting. Presenting the Media Economic Review to Parliament on Thursday, Finance Minister Colm Imbert said the government has recovered $3.8 billion TT in cash so far from Clico since September 2015 and lands in Tobago valued at $186 million TT for the site of the proposed Sandals Resort. Selected Clico assets and Clico Investment Bank are also to be transferred. Imbert outlined some of the efforts made by the government to recover the billions pumped into the Clico bailout. They include the distribution of Clico shares to Republic Bank. A total of $42,475,362 shares of Republic Bank, valued at $4.3 billion, have been transferred directly to the corporation soul or state enterprises and Clico for onward transfer to the government. This represents 26% of Republic Bank. Former St. Vincent and the Grenadines Prime Minister Sir James Mitchell believes the country should stick with the Privy Council as its final court. Back in 2009, residents voted in a referendum against changes to the constitution that would replace the London-based Privy Council with the Trinidad-based Caribbean Court of Justice. Speaking on a local radio program, Sir James said the verdict of the people should not be tampered with. His comments came amidst allegations by opposition lawmakers that the Dr. Ralph Gonzales-led government might use the reference Constitutional Questions Bill 2018, which will be debated later this month, to replace the Privy Council without a referendum. The Prime Minister has said that is not the case. Sir James, who previously got a favourable ruling from the Privy Council related to, to a commission of inquiry into whether there was any wrongdoing in the construction of a marina under his administration, says if government abolishes appeals to the Privy Council, there is no going back from that. The former Vincentian leader made it clear that his position had nothing to do with the distrust of West Indies jurists. Sir James said the region had the talent and the ability, but he urged the New Democratic Party, which he founded, to maintain an objection to any move to abolish the Privy Council to go to the CCG. The challenge brought by Jamaica's Opposition People's National Party to the National Identification and Registration Act that it says will invade citizens' privacy will be heard in court on June 8th. One of the lawyers involved in the case, Donna Scott Motley, is Mon Donna Scott Motley. She anticipates that the judge will set the timetable for the case on that date. The documents have been served on the Attorney General of Jamaica, and we are looking forward to all the processes following in as expeditious a manner as possible. We remain confident in our position, but more importantly, we are determined that this action will be taken on behalf of the people of Jamaica who have concerns about this legislation. It, we are trying to protect the constitutional rights, and we are looking forward to a determination by the court. PNP General Secretary Julian Robinson filed the claim insisting that sections of the National Identification and Registration Act passed in the Houses of Parliament last year breached several rights guaranteed under the Constitution. He is seeking a declaration from the court that the particular sections of the act are null and void and should be struck down. And coming up in Caribbean Newsline, the region warned to brace for a possible major outbreak of dengue fever. Stay with us. More news after this.
watching on May 12th as the Anthony N. Sabga Caribbean Awards for Excellence is broadcast live from the Pegasus Hotel in Jamaica. Join us from 7.30 p.m. Eastern Caribbean time as Kai Miller of Jamaica, Noel and Siobhan Joseph of Trinidad and Tobago, Andrew Boyle of Guyana, and Adesh Ramsubag of Trinidad and Tobago receive half million TT dollars, a medal and citation for their work in the arts, sciences, public and civic contributions, and entrepreneurship. The Career Development Institute's Caribbean Rising Stars in Beauty competition determines the best and most talented in hair, makeup, nails, or barbering. Win a scholarship and prizes worth more than $5,000. Build your clientele and expand your business. Upload four photographs of your best work to our email address. Watch the public vote on our Facebook page. Join the winners at the prestigious Lloyd Erskine Sandiford Center for a live finals competition. Email careerdevelopment.institute at yahoo.com. The Career Development Institute brings the best in regional beauty together. Barbados, renowned for its pristine beachfront and fantastic weather, continues to leave quite an impression on newcomers to the island and returning visitors. The Caribbean island, quite popular as a vacation hotspot, is not only beautiful due to its natural aesthetics, the island of Barbados continues to grow in popularity because of unique connections developed with our people, our culture. We can't wait to welcome you. Be watching on May 12th as the Anthony N. Sabga Caribbean Awards for Excellence is broadcast live from the Pegasus Hotel in Jamaica. Join us from 7.30 p.m. Eastern Caribbean time as Kai Miller of Jamaica, Noel and Siobhan Joseph of Trinidad and Tobago, Andrew Boyle of Guyana, and Adesh Ramsubag of Trinidad and Tobago receive half million TT dollars, a medal and citation for their work in the arts, sciences, public and civic contributions, and entrepreneurship. The Caribbean Public Health Agency, CARFA, is warning the region's residents to gear up for the possibility of a major outbreak of dengue fever this year. It says the outbreak is possible because preconditions of abundant mosquito vector levels still exist and increased levels of dengue are being reported in Latin America and elsewhere. It has therefore advised that as the rainy season begins, efforts to stop mosquitoes breeding and biting should be stepped up. Dr. James Hospitalis, Executive Director of the region's Premier Health Agency, said the dengue virus has been increasing in frequency over the past 30 years. And reports from Latin America show markedly increased cases in recent months. And he warns that the Caribbean can expect it soon. At the same time, the Trinidad-based CARFA said two other mosquito-borne diseases, chikungunya and Zika, which swept the region in 2014 and 2016, are not expected back anytime soon. Meantime, the Ministry of Health in St. Vincent and the Grenadines has just completed a public health campaign sensitizing citizens about the dangers of mosquitoes. Public Health Officer Shamanti Laban says while the ministry has a job to do, residents also have their roles to play. Important that we educate individuals and we empower them to take care of their environment because our health is a shared responsibility and each of us needs to be involved in taking care of our environment and try to fight the bite, basically. So what we're doing is we're distributing educational materials as it relates to the mosquitoes. There's also materials on the diseases such as dengue as well as Zika. And we're also doing a bit on protection. Some things that you can do to prevent breeding, but also how you can protect yourself. So we're also distributing bed nets to the to some communities in, in St. Vincent so that they can protect themselves from being bitten by the mosquito. Laban said the program was also ex executed on Union Island and the response has been overwhelming. And one of the things um, that we're trying to do is try to educate persons, make persons more aware of the implication that mosquitoes can have on them, although they are very small. They, they, can, they can have serious implications on your health and um, it's very important that each of us do what we can to protect not only ourselves but also our neighbors and everyone that's, that's living around you. 
the Belize Trade and Investment Development Service. Beltrade is this week hosted a trade mission from Belgium and the Netherlands with the aim of creating economic linkages between Belizean cocoa producers and potential investors, buyers and technical experts from Europe. Belize officials say there is a need to stimulate the industry. As such, the four-day mission, which ended on Friday, is seen as a fundamental stepping stone to build linkages for the development of Belize, Belize's cocoa industry. We get more in this report from Andrea Polanco of Channel 5 News, Belize. Belize's cacao production is concentrated in the south. In Toledo, smallholders produce about 220,000 pounds of cacao every year. But only small quantities are being processed locally. About nine chocolate producers are using the local cacao beans to produce chocolates and other value-added products, most of which are consumed in Belize. The remainder of cacao is exported to the USA. But the world demand for this kind of organic, fine flavor cacao is growing, and so Beltrade and its partners are hoping to generate that interest within the European market. It's an investment and trade mission. The intention is if they're to invest in the industry, whether at the agriculture le le um, level or at the agro-processing level, so uh, value-added products. And those same products would be traded, exported out of the country, and or the uh, buyers to buy our bean or any product that they see uh, from Belize at our industry right now, what kind of opportunities and um, Beltrade sees that exist right now? Immense. Um, Belize cacao is known for its niche um, quality, its flavors um, from fruity to woody. And so this is, this is in high demand for gourmet um, cacao manufacturers in the U.S. and Europe. And so the opportunity is to see and um, show them the buyers of bean as well as what all products in Belize we have anywhere from spa products so face facial scrubs to spo, um, soaps to coffee um, cacao liqueur to um, cacao tea of course a wide range of chocolates so the the, the value-added production is immense here in the country president of the chamber of commerce for europe and central america in brussels belgium erwin de wheat is part of the visiting delegation he says he would like to see opportunities to establish their own operations in Belize. We have been lucky to um, be able to invite uh, a party of uh, those people to, uh, to come to Belize and, uh, and visit and discuss and see to, uh, to what extent, uh, let's say, they can make investments or um, work out uh, cooperation with uh, local uh, growers and, and discuss the cacao business and the quality of the cacao. What specifically would perhaps be a motivation for, for the investors to say, okay, we want to do business with Belize? What would you need to see from our industry? I, I think that uh, the, the opportunity that uh, I think could be created is that uh, people could uh, perhaps set up their own operation, their own, um, let's say, cacao business in cooperation with uh, local people here and uh, make it a kind of a quality brand for them that stands out against, let's say, the traditional uh, cacao um, cooperation that they would have with uh, other uh, countries that uh, produce cacao, you see? I think that is, that's a big advantage, and I, and I think that uh, this is certainly an opportunity that they are looking for, uh, you know, to see to what extent they could set up an operation of their own. Uh, in cooperation with the local people here. And ahead in Newsline Sport, injury rules an experienced Sri Lanka opener out of the upcoming tour of the Caribbean. Stay with us. Sport is next.
It starts from sunrise, a city filled with an island vibe. Music, people, color, friendship, culture, and the warmest of smiles. Come enjoy the unique costumes, pulsating steel pans, exotic culture, exciting fets, and unforgettable people. Discover Antigua's Carnival, the Caribbean's greatest summer festival, July 27th to August 8th, because the beach really is just the beginning. Experienced opener Dimuth Karutnaratne has been left out of a 17-man Sri Lanka team for the upcoming Caribbean tour after failing to recover from a finger injury. The 30-year-old who has scored 3,186 runs from 49 tests fractured a finger during a net session recently while preparing for a domestic tournament and will not feature in the three-test series. Meanwhile, selectors have included four uncapped players for the June 6th to 27th tour, De uh, Kasun Rajitha, Jeffrey Van der See, Asita Fernando, and Mahila Yudawati. Despite having not played in the longer form, the quartet already possess international experience. Rajitha is a seamer who has played three T20 internationals. Lex Pina Van der See has turned out in 11 one day internationals, and 20 year old fast bowler Fernando has a single ODI under his belt. And Yudawati has played nine ODIs and eight T20Is. Former captain An Angelo uh, Matthews and Saranga Lakmal have both been included, but a final decision will be made on their match fitness before the squad leaves for the Caribbean. The squad is led by Dennis Chandamal, who is currently training in Palakeli. Sri Lanka opens the tour with a three-day match starting June 30th at the Brian Lara Cricket Stadium in Trinidad before facing West Indies in tests at the Queen's Park Oval, Darren Sami Cricket Ground and the historic Kensington Oval. Over to Motorsports now, organizers of the prestigious Seoul Rally Barbados are boasting about a much bigger rally this year with an increase in the number of entrants for the event that is set to begin next month. CBC's Anne-Marie Burke has the details. Provisional entries to date are anything to go by. Sol Valley Barbados 2018 is shaping up to be quite a competitive event. We have 93 crews this year. We have participants from 13 different countries, including host nation Barbados. We have more than 40 overseas crews for the fourth consecutive year of the event. 80 overseas drivers or co-drivers, 15 new to the event this year and a record 22 female competitors, seven new to the event. We have 50 local crews and 25 four-wheel drive cars, seven new to the event. Friday night, we're having our ceremonial start, which we did for the last couple of years, but that will be immediately followed by a special stage inside Vaucluse Raceway itself. Uh, after the ceremonial start from 6.30 p.m., uh, it moves straight to, to, into the stage and Basically, the cars will run in reverse order of seating, side by side in pairs. Um, we'll have interviews actually on the start ramp, literally just seconds prior to the, the guys leaving. The first stage, which is part of the rally stage one, is on the rally sprint track, and it will be two laps. We ran a stage like this last year during the rally club's winter rally. Uh, it's 5.8 kilometers, so it really is a, a meaty start to the rally this year. As expected, organizers have shaken things up quite a bit and some new changes have been implemented. The big news really for Saturday is that proper night stages are back. So we have uh, 13 stages to run on Saturday, uh, which is the first time we've done that or the first time we've done that since 2011. On Sunday, um, there are slightly longer stages in prospect, uh, which is going to end up being a little more challenging than recent years. Uh, Saturday is going to end up being the normal kind of Saturday characterization, which is short but bumpy. Sunday's stages are likely to be longer, a little more longer than usual, and obviously faster. Um, in particular, we welcome the return of Gutter Road to Malvern, uh, which is a stage we haven't used in some time, uh, which involves quite a significant jump towards the start of the stage. And we're also reintroducing the Ellesmere component to a stage which is running from Featherbed Lane all the way out to Ellesmere via Kendall. 
uh, which is also a venue that we've not used in some time. The preceding floor king of the hill stays in its traditional format and again will be run from Hangman's Hill to Lion Castle. It will, as per usual, be used to see the cars for Rally Barbados. Both title sponsors, Flo and Sol, are doing just more than sponsoring the event. They'll have their own teams. With the combined efforts of Sol and the Sol Rally Barbados Organizing Committee, we are gearing up to deliver an action-packed calendar of events. But we also have a new addition this year. For the first time, Sol will have two racing teams. Over the years, we've flown all of our drivers under the same flag. But as the event grows, the time has come for each of our fuels to be represented by individual ambassadors. And so we have Team Skeet, made up of Roger and Dane Skeet and their crew, repping our Saul Go Further Infinity Fuels, as well as Team Hill, made up of a rally veteran, Roger Hill and his crew repping our Esso Synergy Fuels. And that's the sport. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Caribbean Newsline is brought to you by the Barbados Tourism Marketing Inc. It starts from sunrise, a city filled with an island vibe, music, people, color, friendship, culture, and the warmest of smiles. Come enjoy the unique costumes, pulsating steel pans, exotic culture, exciting fets, and unforgettable people. Discover Antigua's Carnival, the Caribbean's greatest summer festival, July 27th to August 8th. Because the beach really is just the beginning. Development Institute's Caribbean Rising Stars in Beauty competition determines the best and most talented in hair, makeup, nails, or barbering. Win a scholarship and prizes worth more than $5,000. Build your clientele and expand your business. Upload four photographs of your best work to our email address. Watch the public vote on our Facebook page. Join the winners at the prestigious Lloyd Erskine Sandiford Center for a live finals competition. Email careerdevelopment.institute at yahoo.com. The Career Development Institute, bringing the best in regional beauty together. Can we full headlines? Again, the major developments of this day. The IMF predicts economic growth for the Caribbean over the next two years. And in sport, experienced opener Dimuth Karat Naratni left out of the Sri Lankan team for the upcoming Caribbean tour after failing a recovery to recover from a finger injury. That's Caribbean Newsline for News and Sport from the clock log on to Carnal News. Good night.